So uh, welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our What Matters in Finance 2023 session. I'm Daphne. I'm the Brand Activation Manager for Asia. I'm based in the Hong Kong office and today I'm joined with Scott with me in Hong Kong. He's the uh, global, global client partner in finance. So he will be sharing with us the key trends today. And then next, maybe a bit more of the familiar faces to you. Uh, first in Singapore, we have April, who is our up and coming and in insights very own influencer. Wow. So feel free to ask her like anything <laughs> at the end of the session as well. She might give you like some tips. And then next, we also have Michelle, who's joining us from the Manila office. So she will be sharing a bit more on the financial wealth and health. And then last but not least, there's Jennifer, uh, who is uh, joining us from Jakarta office. So she's more passionate about like uh, how brands are supporting local communities and also supporting uh, small businesses. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's session. So if you do have any questions, uh, maybe leave it in the chat. And then at the end of the session, uh, we will come back to your questions. So I'll pass it on to you now, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie, and uh, very pleased to be here with my colleagues from uh, Southeast Asia. Um, yeah, I was I was reflecting. Uh, maybe I should ask ask my colleagues uh, down in in Southeast Asia this, but I was reflecting this this time. Um, you know, the last few weeks or beginning of this year, uh, what matters to me. You know, and I, I think many of us feel the same. You know, with um, many of the trend people talk about a perma crisis or. I think some trend reports or trend setters call it a poly crisis, right? So you'd be forgiven if you were feeling a little bit anxious. You know, that's that's kind of where we're at. I mean, I, I'm here in Hong Kong. It, it, you know, I only recently went down to Singapore, uh, right, April, and um, you know, it's the first time I left Hong Kong in four years. So it's certainly been a strange time. Um, but I sort of feel, you know uncertainty still but a little bit of hope i don't know uh, april what's the general zeitgeist down in 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 singapore and southeast asia what, what's, uh, what's going on yeah i think you're here right you, you're here in singapore i think mm. Singapore is pretty much back to normal the masks are off but uh me being the gyasu and gyasi singaporean mm. i still wear my mask when i'm commuting on the the public transport but i would say people pretty much gone back to their normal lives and this in Singapore yeah okay great mm. so well let's let's that's us but let's see what what the you know the general public feel about this and we'll go through what matters in terms of the emerging needs so that that's how we look at trends here and um you know there's there's loads of trends reports around this this sort of time of year right i think i've got about 300 stashed away somewhere uh, for 2023 um but you know you might be relieved to know do, do we make up the trends in our report our, our approach is a bit different um so we you know we tend to look at it through a human lens i would say a consumer lens in terms of of the emerging needs so there's a quite a structured process of how we get there so um, first of all, we have a, a actually a specialized team called the Space Doctors, really, uh, really bright bunch of people looking at kind of cultural trends and forces going on. And they produce a number of themes from that, which go into a human meaning drivers model, which is then kind of road tested, collaborated with, co-created with what we call a loom guides. So we have a network of loom guides around the region, which are um, sort of young, young, funky people like you see on the right there. There's some of the Illum guides, uh, much trendier than me. Um, but they're, they're sort of a qualitative phase of, of, of building out these trends. And then we go into a really big quantification and validation. So uh, we take those, those emerging needs, those trends, and we translate them into statements, uh, which we can then put in front of, you know, normal folks like myself and see how much they resonate. And, and so we do that across the world in 17 markets. Um, with around a thousand people per market, so almost twenty thousand people to to validate that. So a very structured process. What that lands on for twenty twenty three, at least, is these twelve trends or these you know which are based around four uh, emerging needs. So there's this kind of a, a color or a flavor to each each group of three here. If you can see the you know, so you've got the orange group, the, the purple group, the peach group, and the red group. So 12 trends we're going, we're going to kind of skate through today. Um, there's lots more information we'll send you in the full report. 12 trends is a lot to get through, isn't it? So um, we'll try and give you a bit of an overview today and, and a bit of a taster and, and things like that. And then we'll see you know, where, we, where we get to uh, with things. But to help with that, 
Um, I like to think of it in terms of, uh, maybe you might see this as a pyramid, I see it as a cake, uh, a cake of emerging needs. So um, on the bottom, we're gonna, and, and at each level of this, pyr this pyramid or cake, we're gonna look at three uh, trends in each layer of, of the cake. So, uh, and, and it's kind of gonna get, go from more functional at the bottom, I, I feel, to, to the more uh, kind of human as you go up. So for example, we're gonna look at supportive systems, people looking for things that support them in their lives um, at the bottom in the peach layer. We're gonna talk more about people's narratives, you know, looking for deeper narratives in their lives and personalization, inclusivity in the, in the kind of purple, the plum layer. And then when we go up into the orange, we talk about how people are looking for stronger connections. And there's some really interesting sort of corollaries with finance around decentralized platforms and collaborative finance, social finance, things happening there. And finally, there's three trends as well on the top, three cherries on the top in, in, the, in the red color there, which is talking about bigger things in life, things that create a sense of wonder or purpose. So we'll uh, work our way up this cake, up this pyramid in the next um, 45, 50 minutes or so, and, and show you the three trends at each layer. And we'll also look at how they manifest in terms of finance. So we've got quite a few finance cases, which hopefully brings it to life for you uh, and, and helps make sense of these emerging needs for 2023 and what matters to um, human beings like you, me, and everyone else. So let's look at that first layer, the peach layer of the cake. Um, and that's a group of trends that we call supportive systems. Now, um, yes, as I said, I don't know about you, but I still feel a bit uncertain about the world. I mean, I, maybe it's just me reading the news every day, <laughs> looking at all the geopolitical things going on in the world. But I still feel very uncertain, you know, even though we're sort of coming out of COVID. And I think that's true of a lot of people. Um, you know, and we want to be kind of more supported, more resilient. Um, it's not just back to normal, you know, it's not COVID's over, let's, you know, let's just, you know, get back to normal. People have, there's an enduring need for resilience, uh, which comes through in the financial space as well. And there are three trends in this whole layer of, of supportive systems. One is adaptable essentials, uh, which is really helping people um, to be more conscious of what they're spending and, and how they're managing things and, and how they're getting through their life, be more adaptable with the essentials in life. There's also a trend called interconnected well-being, which is essentially, you know, we're realizing that many things drive our health and well-being, you know, in our environments and things, much more than we did before. So that's a really interesting trend, particularly for say insurance, but also banks. And then finally, uh, in this particular layer, we look at local flourishing. So when things are tough and things are uncertain, people tend to lean into what's familiar, right? Whether that's buying from a local mom and pop store or you know just supporting your local community. So this collection of trends is all about giving people support, support, and that's why it's called supportive systems. That might sound a little bit conceptual. Uh, so let's ground that with a bit of examples. But before I do that, let me just show you a little bit of the quantitative data that we have on these trends. So remember, I said we we quantitate, we validate these trends, um, well, each of the trends in, in uh, you know, a thousand people in different markets. Um, I won't show you the, the data for all, all of the trends will be here till, till, till the end of the year. Um, but uh, um, just to give you a flavor of what's in the report. So you'll see this, this kind of matrix here. This is for the trend adaptable essentials. So this is about um, being prepared for change in essential things, more conscious of how you perhaps uh, use your money, that sort of thing. And people agree that that's how they're thinking at the moment. So along the axis, they're, they're saying, yes, this is this is an attitude I have. And actually you say, well, you're doing things that help you be more conscious with your money, compare purchases, et cetera. They say, yeah, I'm actually doing things like that. that is, you know, so it's impacting on my behavior. And you see the countries there, uh, sort of a cloud of dots, and you can see that most of the countries are in the top right. So this is a trend which people are thinking about, and they're actually doing things in their life. So that's very much what we call an expanding trend. It's a trend that's having its having its day, basically. So it's also quite a congested space. So lots of people doing things in this space, and you can see on the right. We also ask in the survey uh, which which sectors and areas and and things do you services and products do you associate with this. And lo and behold, financial services comes out really strongly. In fact, this is the strongest trend for financial services. So people looking to be particularly adaptable with the, their essential financial 
uh, activities and services. So it gives you a flavor of the quantitative data. Um, what does that mean in terms of examples? So it's, it is an area associated with financial services. What sort of things are going on there? Well, maybe I can start the ball rolling here and then uh, we can we can hand over a little bit to Michelle and get some examples. But, but you know, there's a lot of um, budget tools, calculators, um, you know, there's apps like Plum here, which is actually from the UK, but it, it really helps you kind of automatically save. It has sort of auto saving rules um, and sort of buckets you can sort of automatically save. So really helping people save and be more resilient. Interesting in the US, tab flow card, new debit card. It actually invests a little bit of money every time you spend on it. So interesting idea, spend investing. So again, this idea of, of kind of putting a little bit away to boost your adaptability and your resilience. But there's lots of interesting things happening in Southeast Asia, right, Michelle? Perhaps you could share a little bit about all the, all the wonderful innovations happening down there. Yep, yep, right. Thanks, God. So if we try to bring it closer to here, now here in Southeast Asia, we see that it's really all about the super apps and bite-sized insurance. So I believe there are no super apps yet in the U.S., so Asia is definitely ahead in terms of this front. So if you take a look at the examples, adaptable tools like GrabPin, they are putting financial services in people's back pockets. Uh, they offer a single entry point when it comes to payment, to investments, and even insurance, all in the Grab app. So this is actually empowering our consumers with everyday financial services in just a few clicks. <clears throat> but we, we also see that when it comes to bite-sized insurance, we have a good example, Snack by Income, a Singapore-based company making insurance more digestible. So what it does is it allows customers to buy small insurance policies by paying micro premiums. So these are some of the examples that, that we have. But if we take a look at other examples, alongside uh, these super apps, we also see different forms of credit now becoming more accessible to consumers. So we see buy now, pay later schemes continuing to grow with the likes of Tomorrow by UOB that enables users to have instant credit approval. And they even enjoy deferred payment with zero interest uh, and fees for a certain time period. But what's interesting, so if I just bring it closer to home here in the Philippines, there is a concept called earned wage access. So it has made its way to emerging markets like here in the Philippines through providers uh, like Savvy. And earned wage access, this is actually also known as an instant pay or on-demand pay, which is a financial service provided by employers to their employees, uh, usually the lower income workers by giving them access to their accrued salary before the end of their pay cycle. And this is wow. uh, something that we see very useful for personal <clears throat> or even emergency financial necessity. So these right. are some of the adaptable essential. Yeah, so, so just to interject, I mean, it's wonderful, isn't it? There's so much innovation going on. And, and I think because you've got such young populations in, in Southeast Asia, right, that just are hungry for these kind of, adaptable digital tools and, and you just see like these emerging markets actually you know i've got super apps develop developed markets haven't got super apps in the same way right so uh it's really interesting and tell us a bit about um uh that, that next trend it sort of links to this doesn't it in yeah. interconnected um well-being isn't it i think yep yeah, yep yeah. so 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 these tools what we've talked about the like super apps and bite-sized insurance they do ensure that we have access to adaptable essentials. But if we take a look at it further, actually, these things also connect to personal well-being. So a good example is that insurers are now playing expanding roles in emerging health and well-being ecosystems. So, so case in point, companies like Prudential launch new features in its Pulse app, uh, which allows people to scan uh, their faces for stress. So this really shows how we are supporting a more healthy lifestyle. But another interesting example is that we are now seeing banks like HSBC also get into this game. Um, for example, with their recent Wealth Plus app. So what this does is it is connecting health to wealth. So it empowers users to take on health challenges uh, all related 
to body and mind well-being where they get rewarded with money for completing challenges. So this really demonstrates that interconnection of body, money, and well-being. Mm, yeah, it's really interesting. So not only is it getting easier to save and be careful with your money, it's really connecting your wealth to your health uh, in a deeper way as well. You know, with you know, who'd have known? You know, for a bank to be talking about health as well as wealth, it's quite it's it's quite a, a interesting development. Um, and then the third trend in this area, thanks, thanks, Michelle. Great, some really interesting things happening there. I want to also just touch on this local flourishing trend. Uh, I know uh, that's really important down in Indonesia. So maybe Jennifer, we can uh, just ask you to, to share a little bit about local flourishing in, in Indonesia, some examples of, of how that's supporting Yes, people. Yes, of course. Thank, thank you, Scott. So for this trend, local flourishing, we'll start with Asia. And let's have a look at China. Yeah. So China, we, this, we have something called WeChat Moments, where... Uh, the small businesses, they, WeChat now allows small businesses and their nearby customers to actually connect. So if a customer is shopping around a retail area, business area, uh, there will be a pop-up. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be a pop-up on their phones to see the, the, the latest promotions, vouchers available among the, the, the merchants around the area. So instantly, it's like instant ads that it pops up on your phone via their WeChat app. They're able to see, they're able to select and choose uh, the best promotions. And hence, the businesses, the local businesses in the area definitely also benefit from this. So that's an example from that's happening in China. Yeah. And uh, over here in Indonesia, yeah, something on the SME financing front. Yeah. There is this app called Awan Tonight. Yeah. And that this Awan Tonight app brings financial financing to local mom and pop shops. Yeah, so it basically uh, it's looking at ways to help finance and also digitalize the mom and pop shops. So now everyone, uh, all those involved in this app will be able yeah, to, to get access to loans. Yeah, and it's all online and also payment services. Yeah, so it's helping the digitalization front in the Indonesian market. Yeah, we also have uh, another example. And this example also in Southeast Asia, this is in Myanmar. And there's this app, yeah, it's called Zigway, founded back in 2016. Now, what Zigway does, uh, it's a fintech, yeah, but it's a social enterprise fintech and it's based out of Yangon. It, it allows uh, affordable loans. So what they provide is they actually provide nano loans, really small loans, yeah. Not just small loans, it's also fully automated. So the entire borrowing process is automated, yeah, no, no, no uh, having to do lots of paperwork. And it allows low-income families yeah, in Myanmar. And uh, the repayments are also made easy because you can actually pay the repayments daily. So it, it adjusts to the earning power of the lower-income families in Myanmar. Brilliant. These are just some examples of how local flourishing is, is working. Yeah. Great. So that's so lots lots of things there. We should probably move on to our next layer of our cake, right? So lots of things making people more supported. Uh, in the ways we've seen. So that's that's fantastic. And a lot going on in Southeast Asia, um, some really interesting innovation. Let's move up to the next layer of our, our cake, the, the plum layer uh, in purple. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is really about, um, remember, things are uncertain for a lot of people uh, and things are also more fragmented in the world. So things are, are much more sort of complex in a way. And people are searching to understand their identities, their narratives, their, you know, what they're doing in their lives, the stages they're going through lives and things like this. And there are three trends in here. Uh, into the nuance is really about how we're picking up more nuanced feedback about ourselves, you know. And we just saw, you know, that Prudential app is reading our faces for stress, right? And, and giving us that feedback. So all sorts of things in addition to that, you know, uh, hormonal feedback, emotional feedback, cultural feedback, you name it. We're getting a much more nuanced view of ourselves. Free from assumptions, you know, the more nuanced our view of ourselves, the more we are inclusive of others. We realize everyone's a bit different. The world's a little bit more complex. You know, it's less binary than, than perhaps we assumed in the past. So we have less assumptions about how who people are or the, the kind of the, bo the boxes or buckets that they're in. And then finally, um, a really big important trend for finance is ever-evolving script. People's lifestyles or scripts in life 
are evolving. They're becoming much more varied and changeable and they're not like the past. So let's take a look at um, some of these. Maybe again, I can kick it off. Um, I think in this area for finance, we see, uh, I mean, we've talked about personalization, I think, for, for a few years, to be honest, but I really see that starting to gain some traction, Ticky, if, particularly if you look up in China, insurers like Zong'an, you know, which has 500 million clients, uh, you know, lots of data, and their whole sort of positioning is Zong'an is different because of you. I mean, it's all about AI personalization. So AI personalization is a big thing about this sort of nuanced view of people and, and things, super personalization. But it's also about deeply personal. So you see trends now like um, financial therapy coming in, going beyond just financial planning, helping people to with the emotional aspects of their financial situation. And uh, Commonwealth Bank in Australia doing some interesting things there with their financial independence hub, helping people who suffered uh, from you know, financial difficulties or, or um, uh, abuse and in, 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 in need that extra emotional sort of personal uh, uh, sort of help and coaching. Uh, so lots of interesting examples. Um, and also uh, the other trend we have in here, as well as a nuanced understanding of people, is free from assumptions. Now, this is a lot in the financial space about inclusivity. So, um, you know, I, well, if you look in the US, there's lots of neo banks now which cater to different audiences of trying to make uh, banking more inclusive, whether that's for, um, you know, for certain ethnic groups in it, you know, like Greenwood there, or, uh, you know, for LGBT plus, etc. And then also for even disabled people. So lots of kind of neo banks emerging that are catering to different audiences, making things more inclusive. It's not just a Western thing. You know, here in Hong Kong, we've seen One Degree, which is a digital insurer with its LGBTQ plus uh, adverts talking about how families are different today. And also HSBC, a traditional bank in someone's eyes, is also talking about uh, redefining this is my family and new types of families. So um, not making those assumptions, being free from assumptions and more inclusive is, is, is coming into a lot of uh, financial brands. I think also, uh, Jennifer, that's that's true as well in Indonesia, right? When you think about what, what brands are doing there in terms of inclusivity, uh, particularly around investment, right? Yes, definitely, Scott. So in Indonesia, uh, we have another we've another super app that's really targeting the younger uh, demographic, yeah. So we've got this app called Ajaib, and Ajaib uh, has been fast gaining a lots and lots of members who are basically... Um, harnessing the power of this app, uh, the younger generation, the, Zens, the Gen Zs are now learning how to do investments. They've been learning how to do investments mm. for the last couple of years. Yeah. So uh, it doubles down. This app now doubles down. Uh, it's serving the millennials. Yeah. And it's also soon moving into other Asia, Southeast Asia countries as well. So basically it wants to democratize um, basically investments, finance. For, for everyone. Okay. Now, Great. apart from Ajaib, we also have this Australia-based app called Rise, yeah? Uh, and it's it's looking at micro-investing, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's attracting users who basically want to round up the sums that they're investing, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's already, and it invests in a diversified portfolio. So, and it's already expanded uh, to countries like Malaysia and Indonesia as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, these are like just... Couple of right. examples here yeah, yeah, on, on yeah. Super so, X. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, go ahead, Scott. Sorry, yeah, like, you know, it's very interesting. So, you know, making it easier for, for younger people to Correct. be more inclusive to, to them getting into investment. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, we, we, of course, also have a look at Islamic finance. Yeah. So, and of course, Southeast Asia is, is a rising powerhouse for, for things, all things Islamic finance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this region, we, we have an app like it's called Alami. And it basically looks at, uh, at using the Sharia. Uh, using the Sharia compliance, so Sharia compliance with tech, yeah, it looks at solutions using following the Islamic law, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. things like peer to peer lending, Islamic crowdfunding, and also online payment providers that are Sharia compliant are the, some of the things that they look at. But not forgetting that there are other apps that are already uh, really, very big in the market, for example, GoPay, 
yeah, GoPay that has already tied mm. up with the e-commerce uh, giant is now Go, no, no, known as GoTo. So and, uh, mm. Yes, yes, we've got GoTo now here. And GoTo mm. now, they, they understand the need for, for Muslims in the country to pay their zakat every year. So now they, they have, we have an app that enables digital donations, yeah, so which right. is the compulsory arms, yeah. So GoPay has that, yeah. And Bukalapak, yeah, another top e-commerce firm, now offers Sharia compliant investment app. It's called B Money, and it starts as low as 1,000 rupiah. So it's, it, it's now made... Very accessible, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm. donations, funding, uh, uh, anything related to investments, easy with smaller mm. numbers. Yeah. Wow. Wow. The innovation keeps coming, doesn't it? Out of Southeast Asia. Yes. Are, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's just making finance much more accessible to people uh, with that certain groups. And, and wow, you know, and, and fintech, you know, really, as you say, a fintech powerhouse down there. All right. Let's let's um, let's let's quickly do the last of these the, the trends in this in this purple section which is really about personalization personal inclusivity ever evolving script i mentioned it quick show of the data here you can see that most of the countries here are thinking about this thing people are thinking that traditional milestones and and kind of you know life moments education marriage you know the usual things that many financial companies use to target people people are saying those are changing basically these are evolving that you know some of these things are not not so maybe aspirational in the past and that's that's something people are pretty much thinking about uh, and to some extent uh, acting on uh, across the markets and it's quite associated with financial services as you might expect for some of those big moments uh, in life what does that mean in terms of some of the ways it manifests maybe i, I touch briefly on this one um, but it's interesting. You, I mean, at top right there, if you think, um, to me, it's interesting, you know, children as young as six are being educated on how to invest. You know, that's, you know, things have changed at the, at the young end of things in terms of finances and how quickly people are, or young children really are being educated and made financially literate. Um, if you get older and you're older, you're Gen Z, for example, uh, half of Gen Z have a side hustle. There's this whole gig economy thing. That's a very different world. You have um, you know, so you have at the young end, you've got Go Henry there that is, is educating, um, you know, young children uh, how to invest. And then as you get a bit older, you've got banks like, believe it, De believe it or not, Dave in the bank called Dave in the US. Um, and you can see it basically, it's not only a bank, it, it helps people to find a side hustle. I mean, I need a side hustle. Maybe that uh, maybe they'll come to Hong Kong, Dave, and I can get their help to get a side hustle. And, and then as you go right to the other end of the spectrum, uh, sort of where I'm approaching, which is the you know uh, you know the, the more mature end of things, uh, there's so much uh, new age tech coming in. You know, so uh, platforms that really help um, you know people manage their money, uh, you know their, their their retirement, their caring, you know all sorts of things. So it's you know things are really changing, and particularly technology is helping with that. I'll leave you with this idea from Serena Williams. Um, she retired. Uh, recently she looks very young to retire to me but uh, anyway um, she said that um, you know she she's never really liked the word retirement it doesn't feel like a modern word to her you know so and some people you know are talking in in the financial space some advisors talk about rewirement not retirement so uh, yeah if, if you're sort of um, my age and on you know don't think about retirement think about rewirement so everything's changing and, and financial brands have a lot a lot of roles to play in terms of the different things going on now in people's lives. Um, but let's move on, let's move up, up the cake, up the pyramid to the orange layer. And this is about, well, we've talked about being more adaptable, haven't we, more supported, more connected well-being. We've talked about being more personalized and more inclusive and you know, having more sort of varied lifestyles. But that's all about me sort of thing. What about our connections to other people? And we do, over this time, what we see as an emerging need is people have a very strong need to connect to others. I mean, I'm sure like you, I mean, we've, as I said, we've been in Hong Kong for four years. We haven't seen our grandparents, parents, um, but it's been like daily Zoom calls for the last three, three years. You know, that, that need for connection, I think we've all felt and, and reevaluated. So stronger connections is a really important thing. Uh, we need it to, to give us health, to energize us. And that's, that's really the trends that we see in this area. So social health, 
that's an interesting trend where we're realizing the impact of our social connections on our health. Honest sense making, an interesting one, particularly driven by Gen Z, I think, is that openness to different cultures and societies and wanting to understand the nuances and the differences between different people's beliefs and practices. You're going to start seeing that coming through, particularly for Gen Z much more. They want to get sort of honest and candid advice on things. And then collaborative magic. We realize that if we get different perspectives together, we are increasingly realizing that gives energy, it gives new ideas, it gives new synergies, etc. Um, how does that manifest in terms of, of finance and what we see in finance? Well, it's a bit more nascent in finance. I think the first two areas you've seen, there's a lot of busy activity in the finance space. But here, I think it's a little bit more distant, but it's coming. Um, you know, for insurers, for example, uh, would not would probably want to know that, that increasingly there are gyms, um, finance things like F3 uh, in the US, which um, is basically a fitness thing for men. But it's not just you know, as you can see here, it's not just about working out, it's about bringing them together for camaraderie, helping to drive leadership in local communities for males. So men have got a, got a bit of a struggle at the moment, uh, but that's another, that's another topic for another day. Um, but, you know, you see things like that, you see, you know, AI in Australia is doing a lot of work on the new workforce uh, kind of reality, a lot of people working from home, a lot of people lonely as a result, that affects their health. Even nation, you know, a lot of banks in, in the UK have closed their branches, but some, like Nationwide, a client of ours, they said, actually, no, we're not going to close some of these branches because we know that there are people in some of these isolated communities. It's really going to impact their health. They've got no way of getting social connections. So social health, a really interesting area for, I think, insurers particularly to look at. Um, but let's let's move along a bit to some of these other two social trends. Um, you're our influencer. Um, April. So uh, I'm, I can't pretend to be that. So I'm going to hand over to you to, sure. to make, make sense of, of, of all this fintock thing that's going on. <laughs> yeah, thanks, God. I, I think this is definitely a year of social finance and influencers. So a lot of people are actually tapping into influencers for candid, digestible, honest advice. And TikTok is definitely becoming a hub of financial advice, you know, with influencers like Money Queen becoming really popular these days. Very inspiring for influencers wannabes like me. <laughs> and of course, let's not forget personal finance community. They are also getting really popular these days. So the other day, I just found out that, you know, Sidley, a very popular uh, personal financial community in Singapore, they attract up to 1.1 million visitors on an oh, average. Wow. Yeah, mm. uh, I, I was thing. Like, oh, this price. Well, but then again, I myself actually visit Sydney almost every day <laughs> to read out on financial product reviews and also get financial tips as well. Yeah. I, I have to say, I interject, but if you want to know the latest deals, things in Singapore, April's the person to, uh, you know, you want to get ahead in your finances, a good person for tips. And, and so there's this honest sense making. Tell us a bit about how that sort of deepens a little bit, uh, you know, in terms of you know, deeper collaboration as people beyond sort of just sense making. Yeah. So earlier on, we talked about the social finance bit. Now we're shifting into collaborative kind of finance. So here are some examples of how, you know, blockchain has enabled collaboration in the world of finance. So with socials, I think, you know, you can actually own a share in the world and the future of the sports club. Or one mm. can actually go into this app called Clara, which is like a glass door for influencers to come check how much they can make on a campaign and also pitch accordingly. It's quite magical mm. and exciting, isn't it, Scott? Like the world of finance, how it's become. I think it is. I mean, these are just touching the surface because I think we've 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 seen so much starting to emerge in terms of, I guess, what people call DeFi or decentralized mm. finance. So there's a lot more kind of peer-to-peer -peer lending, uh, you know, um, lots of sort of shared, you know, shared insurance concept. You know, there's I think it's sort of this, it's a really interesting space. It's it's not not something I'll, you know, some of the traditional players are, are fully in yet, but I, you know, as you say. Some of the new kind of blockchain platforms and things are really starting to innovate in this space and and make yeah finance more more kind of um, shared and equitable um, and crowdsourced and all those things. Yeah, great. Okay, let's um, let's move on uh, to 
wow, we've got through three layers of our cake already. So we've, we've kind of got through nine trends. That's pretty good. I hope it's not overwhelming for you. I hope you're, you know, so we've gone from the, the supportive systems at the bottom, remember, uh, which is quite functional, wasn't it? We went up a layer to more personalization, more nuanced understanding, you know, scripts in our lives. We then went up to what we've just seen, which was kind of the socialist backs, looking, you know, our, our health, you know, coming together with others to make sense of things, but also to collaborate, uh, even in the finance space as well. Then finally, we're at the top of the, the cake, the pyramid here, um, the cherry on the cake, uh, which is it is the kind of the deepest layer. It's what we call the integrated wonder. And again, um, I sort of relate it personally, you know, like, again, I, I feel at this time, a lot of uncertainty still. I mean, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the world, I think. But I guess like a lot of people, I'm, I'm sort of hopeful that you know, we, maybe we're not going back to normal. That seems clear, but but there's there's a new sort of thing happening. There is a lot of innovation. There's a lot of things to be positive about, and I think generally um, there's a lot of people who feel that way. They want to look forward. They want to uh, find hope. They want to connect to more immersive things, more meaningful and more purposeful things. You know, um, so not just to be about adaptable or sported or personalized. So this is the deepest sort of layer, and um, the three trends that we have. At this layer are, as you can see on the screen, and um, let me just briefly introduce those. So uh, in the middle there, sensory intensity. I don't know about you, but I I feel this as well. You know, I, I, I don't go to the shopping mall very often. I mean, it's a bit boring, to be honest. I, you know, I, I only want to go out if, if there's something... I don't know, interesting or, you know, look, you know, it's a bit different, you know, and I think a lot of people are feeling that, you know, they want something more, something more sensory, more immersive. I mean, some of us have been locked up in our bedrooms for three years, right? So, of course, you know, this is an important thing. So something more immersive. Um, I've also, you know, been out walking, uh, not tree hugging, maybe, but uh, a lot of people here in Hong Kong have been, have been um, camping and getting out. I think we're all realising the value of immersing in nature and the, the value of, 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 of nature around us, perhaps, perhaps hopefully before it's not too late to say some of that as well. And then finally, um, you know, I suspect many of us have been meditating a bit the past few years or turning to uh, other, other sources of, of comfort and, and kind of reassurance, spiritual, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so embracing the universe is another sort of dimension here. Let's see if we can get through these in the time and give you a flavor of how these are manifesting in um, the finance space. So April, sensory. Yeah. finance companies getting more sensory and more intense. Tell us about that. Definitely. So financial services are definitely becoming more immersive or sensory. You know, we've got banks entering the metaverse like HSBC. They bought a pot of land on Sandbox and JP Morgan also opened a lounge in the decentral land. And then when we... Talk about, you know, sensory branding, MasterCard is definitely a leader in this space. So they introduced a touch card, which is aimed at helping the blind and the low-sighted people. So with the touch card, they can simply just pay with uh, touch alone. So this mm. is what is happening on the online space, but um, it's not just online, right? Banks are also making investment offline to kind of engage and uh, win over customers. So these examples here are from Singapore. So last year, OCBC, one of the biggest local banks mm -hmm. in Singapore, they opened an experience center that houses an omakase restaurant, a bookshop, and even an wow. art gallery. Yeah, uh, interesting. And then Sounds we've got cool. two as well, throwing events like yoga, view making for its clients. So Banks in Singapore are really going all out. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's funny because, well, I say funny, it's it's not funny for some people, but branches have, mm -hmm. if you look around the world, there's been a lot of branch clo closures, right? Particularly with the cost of living crisis. But I do see in certain areas that, that there is an investment in branches. You know, the US, I think Capital One has been investing in kind of community branches, um, again, maybe not so much for an immersive experience, but more to connect to the local community. I mean, we saw that example of Nationwide um, briefly earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. Some some things are going more digital, but something and, and more immersive in the digital space, the metaverse, and then some things are getting more kind of immersive in the real world. So, yeah, thank you. Very interesting. So, yeah, it's not a boring finance area at all. You know, finance brands are really trying to engage and make things more interesting let's talk a little bit about 
embracing the universe. So interestingly, when you look at the report, you'll see that this is a little bit more of a nascent trend. What that means is people are not thinking so much about it or doing so much about it in the mainstream, but it is, it's still happening and it's something that can increase more over time. And it is very associated with, uh, indeed, with financial services, which is kind of interesting. Now you might think, how, how on earth is financial services associated with, with sort of spirituality and embracing the universe? Actually, it's associated a lot when you reflect about it. And you look at the examples, we heard from Jennifer, for example, and maybe this is more obvious, you know, in some markets or in others, but, you know, Islamic finance or Indonesia, or other parts of the world, but particularly Indonesia, very much, um, a, you know, a lot happening there, a center for uh, Islamic finance. So that connection, that direct connection between finance and religion. Um, and it's not just about Islamic finance, it's happening around the world, you know. Um, you know, Life Surge is a movement in the US, which is kind of a roadshow where, where, you know, that combines kind of Christian teaching with how to manage your wealth. You know, so again, a kind of a, a combination, you see that happening in faith investing in the UK, for example, which is bringing together um, different sort of faith denominations to, to, to help uh, in, in, you know, so people can invest around their faith and their principles. Interesting example in Thailand there, um, I, I couldn't resist putting that in. Um, it's it's a, um, a crypto amulet um, NFT, uh, actually blessed, properly blessed by, by a Buddhist monk. So, you know, you're seeing some really interesting things here. And um, yeah, not enough time to talk about all of this, but if you look up manifesting um, on TikTok, you'll find lots of stuff where people are trying to manifest wealth by being positive and thinking. So there's lots of things going on in this kind of embracing the bigger stuff in the universe. Um, and uh, including, I would say, uh, some of the examples here. So even on the right here, some of the you know the more how should I say secular insurers, uh, you know more rational insurers like Zurich and AXA, they are actually talking in a very sort of bigger way, you know, about informed optimism or progress for what matters in people's lives. So even though it's not religion, it's it's part of that bigger purpose um, and so on and so forth. And there's lots of blockchain coming in, which is thinking about how to make charity and giving easier and, and think platforms like Give It uh, and so on and so forth. So lots of examples of that. And, and um, that also sort of blends in from embracing the universe also into that trend of life rewilded, which is an appreciation of nature. Now, of course, there's lots going on in the, sorry, my screen keeps flicking there. Just go back. Uh, there's lots going on in the ESG space uh, for finance, as you probably know. It's getting busier and busier. Consumers are, are not always sure what to make of it, but there is a lot more going on now in the last year or so. Alibaba, you can you know count your carbon credits in terms of you know doing low carbon activities like taking public transport or recycling your coffee cups. You know you've got robo investors in Singapore like UOB, you know helping you automatically invest in more sustainable funds. HSBC recently launched a biodiversity fund. Biodiversity is also a big issue, if you know all about the climate things. And there's just a lot of green tech going on now. And uh, some of it's really interesting. You know, virtual banks like Deconomy at the top there. You know, that's their website. We drive climate action globally. It doesn't even look like a bank, right? It looks like a NGO focused on the environment. And this is the kind of shift that's starting to happen. You see Raise Green is a platform about investing in local businesses that are green. So bringing all that green life rewilded sort of appreciation of nature and driving it into local community activities, not just big, big goals in annual reports. And Stripe as well, helping local businesses uh, be more sustainable through the payment services that they, are, they offer. So there's lots of things happening in terms of connecting to the bigger things and uh, hopefully making the world a better place and, and more purpose. And we're just going to see more of that as well. So um, just looking at the time, I think we're probably, we, it's time to look at Daphne, but probably time to, um, you know, summarize and, and shape up. There's a lot to take in. Um, and we will send you the report, of course, and there's lots more examples. I mean, that's one of the things that makes the financial space so exciting. It's just so much innovation going on. And, it's, and I think it's helpful to look at it through these human needs um, that, are, that are happening. As you say, you know, the, the things that we as human beings are feeling a need for, 
uh, as we emerge into 2023. So this is just a summary. We, so we you know, have a think about what does it mean if, if for your brand, if finance is becoming much more human and more deeply human? Because finance has always been a bit of a homo economicus, very rational spreadsheet world, hasn't it? Where you're supposed to you know, not be emotional, but actually we all are. And you know, it's becoming more and more human. So we need more support. We need not just products pushed at us. We need things that support our lives. You know, um, we don't just want to be targeted as segments. We we want things to be personalized. We want things to be actually very deeply personal sometimes in the interactions we have with companies. You know, we used to just trust banks, insurers, authorities, institutions, didn't we? We would just trust them, they've got the authority. That's not so true anymore. We're turning to each other, we're turning to our peers, we're turning to our friends, we're turning to decentralized networks to, to get advice, to make sense, um, to collaborate, you know, and to build things. So that's a big shift that's coming. And then finally, we saw, you know, finance plays a really deep role uh, for different people in terms of connecting with something bigger, whether that's playing a HSBC game in the metaverse or uh, a new bank branch experience, but but also religion, you know, Islamic finance or, um, you know, some of the brands like Zurich are really helping to, to create a sense of purpose around the planet and the future and nature, et cetera. So what does it mean for your brand if, if, if we're humanizing finance in these ways? Where do you think you are best placed to play? So something for a workshop you might ha uh, have coming up. Um, we're happy to help with that. Just a quick sales bit here. Um, you know, trends is really the starting point. But if you can frame the human emerging needs, then, you know, everything can flow from that. And, you know, we can help with the process here where we start to you know, innovate against some of these areas, test those um, perhaps propositions, innovations with uh, consumers and help you through the innovation uh, pathway, as you can see here. But something for another time, if you're interested in partnering on innovation. And of course, many of you know us for communities. Communities is, 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 is a great kind of backbone to that innovation process uh, because you can have a, a group of people that you can, you know, cons consumers, customers, you can turn to through that process, test and learn, co-create, et cetera. So it's a really valuable um, adjunct to that, that sort of innovation process that's based on fundamental human uh, emerging needs and drivers. And plenty of examples that we haven't got time to go through today, um, but some of you on the call are probably from these companies, so you'll, you'll have experienced some of our innovation work. Um, but, um, you know, absolutely uh, really love to follow up with you if anything here is interesting, share more cases, focus in on certain areas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but hopefully this has whetted your appetite um, uh, to, to understand uh, people's human needs more and, and to and to serve those uh, needs going forward. Thank you.